to Shalom. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Ha Rikakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. And I also want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing this truth with sincerity. All right. And this is Shabai of GMS Denver. Spirit has me in the wisdom of Solomon in chapter 1. I'm going to go ahead and just start reading it. It says, Love righteousness, ye that be the judges of the earth. Think of Yahweh with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. All right, so, you know, that's what we got to do. We got to, you know, seek Yahweh with simplicity, you know. And simplicity means easy, you know. If something is simple, then it, it should be easy, all right? So you're going to be seeking Yahweh with an easy, you know, easy uh, and meek attitude, all right? You're not going to question the truth, you know. The, the, the truth, you're going to hear the voice and you're going to follow, you know, of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem. All right, uh, verse two. And actually, let's go through the precept real quick. Oops. Precept in Psalms two. I think it's nine. So basically, what it is is, um, you know, you have a, you have the ability uh, as an elect man, we become judges when we learn this truth. And we, how do we judge? We judge according to these holy scriptures. All right, so we judge according to the Bible and righteousness. So people always say, and this, you know, it's the spirit because Elder Gabar was doing a video on this, Elder Apostle Gabar. And um, basically he was going in on how the, the, when you talk to a Christian, you know, at camp, they'll tell you, hey, only God can judge me. Well, yeah, you're right. And he's judging you through his mouth, who are the prophets. And he's judging you by his word. All right. So let me go to this. Uh, the precept is Psalms 2 and 10. It says, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. <sighs> Showing you that, hey, the prophets we're here to we're here to judge judge the nations man you know and it's through the uh, wisdom and knowledge of, and power of the the holy scripture the lord's words verse uh, 2 for he will be found of them that tempt him not and showeth himself unto such do not distrust him for froward thoughts separate from yahweh and his power when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. So you see, we're gonna reprove the unwise. So what that means is, you know, we're, we're showing them their transgressions. The people that don't know this Bible, the people, you know, there are men, you know, who really, Lord willing, the elect is already sealed. But if, there, if there's elect men still out there that haven't been sealed, you know, well, they're gonna hear this truth you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, and they're they're going to hearken and, and you know eventually the end will be will be brought into fru fruition because the prophecy would be fulfilled, you know, that that the elect are sealed, they've got the truth sealed in their in their foreheads, in our minds, you know, and um you know, we we could go ahead and speak into existence the plagues that are going to plague Babylon, you know. This is verse 4. For into a ma malicious soul wisdom shall not enter. So malicious, if you're, if you're, oh, I'm sorry, I got to go back to the script so you could see it while I'm reading. So it says, for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. All right, so a malicious soul would be somebody who ain't believing this truth. A malicious soul is somebody who is not of the nation of Israel. You know, you, these heathen are wicked, you know. They're wicked because 
you know, they, they have no laws to, uh, to govern them. So therefore, they be wicked, you know. That's the separation. The law separates you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who are the Israelites. It separates you from the other nations because you're, uh, you know, you have a guide, a guideline when these other nations don't have a guideline. Instead, you know, here in Babylon, America, their guideline is a, is a lie taught by the Edomite, the so-called white man, all right? So we go to verse 5. So yeah, that, the wisdom's not going to dwell with any of these heathen. The wisdom's not going to dwell with any of these uh, two-thirds. And really all you got to do is just test the spirits and you can see that that's true. Because these heathen, they're, you know, they're eating abominations. Their, their food is abominable. You know, Esau, his, his whole being, his presence is abominable. You know, and the two-thirds, they're abominable, be, abominable because they become just like Esau. You know, they literally trust in his system. They believe everything that Esau stands for. But they reject the knowledge when the true judges are giving them the true knowledge and wisdom, right? So we go to uh, verse 5. I'm sorry, verse, yeah, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of dis discipline will flee deceit. So, you know, in this truth, you, you, you're fleeing from deceit, meaning you're not able to be deceived, you know? What's that verse? For the elect, you know, the elect would be deceived. If it were possible, let me find that verse. Oh, okay, I thought it was in Matthew, but I wasn't sure. So let's go to Matthew 24, 24. Because what, let me read it again. It says, For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. All right, so the men of the Lord, men of the Lord, the men of the truth, the men of GMS, you know, we're going to Deceit is not going to be an option when it comes to us, you know? Only with these two-thirds and these heathen. They're the ones who are, you know, deceived and able to, you know, they can, the Edomite can trick them. That's why they're all wearing masks and scaring, walking around scared for their lives and scared that they're going to get this uh, coronavirus, you know? This is Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Yahawashais and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So you see, if it was possible, these devils would deceive us too. But because this verse right here, the Bible tells us that the elect won't be deceived, you know. I think it's in Corinthians, uh, the verse that says, for they will, for we are not, let's see, let me just type it in. For we are not, ignorant, I think it's Corinthians, yep, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2.11, so let's go to that. Because we're not, we're not fooled and we're not, we don't fear the coronavirus, all right? 2 and 11, and it's because of this verse right here. First off, we read in Matthew 24, you can't deceive the elect. You know, Esau, Edom is deceiving the, the nations and the two-third and the heathen. But he can't deceive the elect because it's not possible. We just read that, all right? But here's a 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. So the coronavirus, he's, we're not ignorant of that thing. We're not walking around with fear, you know, like the heathen and the two-thirds, thinking that you know, there's this uh, deadly virus that's going to kill us all off the earth, you know. No, we're not deceived because you can't deceive the elect, you see. It's impossible to deceive the elect. All right, and those devices goes into uh, 
The word device it means uh, wicked mind. So anything that Esau Edom's wicked mind creates, hence the vaccine, hence the coronavirus, hence the microchip. You see, those are all wicked devices and we're not ignorant of them, right? But the heathen and the two-thirds are ignorant to those devices because they're going to take, they're going to take those, uh, they're going to take those devices, you know? All right, so we ain't ignorant to the devices of Esau Edom, all right? And now we are on verse 6 in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Oops. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 6. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For Yahweh is witness of his reins and a true beholder of his heart and the hearer of his tongue. So in other words, Yahweh, he, can, he knows the blasphemer who he is Esau Edom. He knows the man who set up the, the false Messiah, you know, the so-called uh, white Jesus, you know. Yahweh knows who, who, which nation did that, which nation set that up, as is spoken of in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So it says, he's a true beholder of his heart. Yahweh knows the mind of the white man, the Edomite, you know. And he's and a hearer of his tongue. He hears the words. He hears the blasphemies of the so-called white man, the Edomite, you know. The, the so-called white man's sins have reached unto heaven, you know, like it says in Revelation. You know, he, he's literally got satellites in heaven. And then also the messengers, which are the angels, hey, they see, they see everything that happens. You know, those so-called UFOs, those chariots, they're witnesses, you know, and they're, the word angel means messenger. And they'll report what they witness to, uh, to Yahweh, you know. So Yahweh has the prophets for a mouth and he has the angels for messengers, the chariots, you know, the angels. All right, so let's uh, read seven. For the spirit of Yahweh filleth the world and that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Because remember in Genesis, Yahweh spoke everything into existence, you know. He said, let there be light and there was light. Let's go to it, you know. That's that voice it's talking about in the existence. Verse Genesis 1 and 3. And Yahweh said, let there be light, and there was light. So all he had to do was speak it with his voice. And in the same fashion, the prophets, all we do, all we got to do is speak this truth into existence. Speak these prophecies into existence. Speak the prophecies into manifestation, you see. The more we go out there and preach and cry aloud in the streets and wisdom's crying out in the streets, you know, in the chief place of concourse of Esau, you know, we, we're speaking these prophecies into existence, into the manifestation and ultimately to the destruction of, uh, of Babylon America, all right? That's, so, uh, you know, let's, read, let's jump down to six because it's dealing with speaking that and using that voice. And Yahweh said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters, all right? And that's the, the firmament dividing the, you know, the, the dividing the sky from the waters, you know? Which it's all waters because at the end of the day because it's a cycle, you know? So let me go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 and now we're at verse 8. Well, let's read 7 again. It says, For the Spirit of Yahweh filleth the world. And that's what you see right now, right? He's pouring His Spirit upon all flesh. That's why Edomites are freaking out. That's why America is uh, in a weird state of... Uh, in a weird state of chaos right now. Because Yahweh is pouring His Spirit on this nation, this wicked nation. Ultimately uh, preparing it for its destruction, you know? But our job as prophets and teachers, we need to go out there 
and keep pushing, keep uh, keep speaking this thing into fruition, you know. And it says, and which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. So, you know, everything is the will of Yahweh. And his voice, you know, that like we read in Genesis, he said, let there be light, and there was light, all right? The prophets were saying, hey, let there be a destruction come upon Babylon, and eventually there's going to be a destruction that comes upon Babylon. And how do we know this? Because it's already been written, brothers. It's already been written, all right? And this is verse 8. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance when it punisheth pass by him. See, so that means those uh, missiles, you know, the the wicked are going to get killed in the in nuclear fire, while the while the elect are going to get taken up or you know beamed up in a chariot, a so-called UFO. Verse nine. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his word shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. So you see, that's just what I said earlier, and I, I didn't even read that verse yet, but that's the same thing. The manifestation of the Lord is going to come because of the manifestation of this, this uh, wicked Esau, Edom, wicked deeds. So, uh, verse 11 beware of therefore beware of murmuring which is in profitable or I'm sorry unprofitable and refrain your tongue from backbiting for there is no word so secret that shall go for not and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul so just like Yahweh's words are powerful you know he puts his words in our mouth so our, our words become powerful because they're really not our words, they're His words. So, you know, let me read that again. You can't, don't be murmuring. Murmuring means complaining. There's no profit in a complainer, right? You're, nothing good comes out of that, man. You know, refrain your tongue from backbiting, you know? Meaning you don't want to go back and say something and that you're going to regret, you know? For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. So you know, you're, you're doing damage to your own soul by being a heathen or being an idiot, and, and you don't know how to control your tongue, all right? So uh, verse 12, Seek not death in the error of your life, and pull not upon yourselves destruction, with the works of your hands. And ultimately, it's Yahweh's will. You know, if he gets, if he puts a spirit of, you know, an, a reprobate or a, or a two-third or a heathen, if he put that spirit on you or an Edomite, then hey, you know, there's, there's nothing you can do. It's, it's already been ordained. But it does say, pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. Because your own your own doings, your own actions, ultimately are going to lead you to destruction or salvation. We already know it's preordained. So the two thirds and the heathen, they're old, and Esau, Edom, they're ordained to take the microchip and, and to die a, a you know a grievous death, a destruction. But the one third, we read it earlier, they won't be deceived. We know not to take that microchip. We know not to take the mark of the beast, all right? For Yahweh made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction, the destruction of the living. And really, this is talking about the elect and the chosen, right? Because we're the only ones who are living according to this truth. And you know, the two thirds and the heathen, they're basically the walking dead, you know? They're not living. So that's what that's dealing with in that verse, uh, verse 13, you know. So he, he's, he's not going to take, Yahweh doesn't take pleasure when, when one of his elect dies or one of his chosen dies, you know. 
because we know that there are some some uh, prophets who will have to suffer death on this side, you know. But it's going to be an honor if you die in the truth, you know. Verse 14. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were healthful. And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal. All right? So literally, when we come into this truth, we become immortals. Right? We know that, you know, yeah, maybe Esau can kill the, the body, but he can't slay the soul. You know? Let's go to that real quick. Just find it. I gotta remember where it's at. Okay, Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So that's Yahweh Shai. I mean, and Yahweh, you know. you. We fear Yahweh because he can kill our body and soul. The only thing the Edomite can kill is our body. But see, our soul is, is immortal. And eventually, in the kingdom, we're gonna receive immortal bodies. All right? So, verse uh, 16. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the, let's read it one more time. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it. So, you know, that's that last scripture, hey, there are going to be some men that take um, part with this body and this immortality, you know, we'll become immortals. So, with that, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Ha Raka Kudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akyam pushing this truth with sincerity, all right? Shalom to the elect.